Okay, guys. I just pulled off the header because when we went across it with the camera, you could hear the leak was in these tubes. <laughs> this was Junior's side. Oops. Now, bear in mind, we used the, the cheap gaskets because I wasn't going to waste my good gaskets until it was in the car. So these were cut in pieces. See the dog leg? See the dog leg? Oops. See the exhaust leak? See the exhaust leak? You can see right up here. <laughs> Junior put it on upside down. Okay. At least I know there's nothing wrong with the headers. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. And he made sure he got these right. I guess during that process. And the funny part was is we had this header off three times yesterday, but these gas get stuck to the head, so I never looked at them. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. See the darkness of it right there. The darkness of it right there. You can see the slit. So that's a pretty big hole. It should have sounded worse. And sorry about the fact that the sound of the hose was almost louder than the engine. There must be something with this camera that it picked up that high piercing sound. So I know when you guys first heard it, it probably sounded like something was wrong with the engine, but no. Right near the end, right before I turned on that camera, I came over and I rinsed down the radiator to keep it one, you know, quick cool, to keep you know everything within check, and the uh, hose touched the muffler, and it just started spraying on me, and I just jumped back. You don't know what's happening. There's so much going on, and I don't know what's on these headers. I didn't paint these headers, but whatever it is, smoked. Holy moly, that you guys saw in the video, it's like smoked instantly. They're all like chalky looking now. And what you guys didn't see in the video was as those headers started to smoke and the tube started to turn purple, I had these hooked on. And I had them running down the driveway off to the side to try and give it a little extra muffling sound. And they started to smolder. And when we turned around, it looked like, um, it looked like the thing was burning a quarter oil a second, pouring out of there. And I was like, Junior's like, what's wrong with the engine? I was like, no, it's the tubes. Because I had that happen once at work. And I kicked them off. <laughs> and the tubes were just sitting there smoking. But I didn't have time to grab the camera and turn it back on. So here's the starter that we threw in with all the dirt on it. Uh, yeah. I mean, can you leave the starter in? Sure. But if the starter goes bad, and he's stuck with the car, I have to take this head around to do it, and uh, that's not happening. So we're going to get a mini starter. Mini starter fits right in. You can take it in and out. Uh, unfortunately, my mini starter that I had was for a four liter, and it, everything's the same. It just doesn't shoot out this far. So, but other than that, uh, I think everything went pretty well. Dip six to bent in the wrong direction. It's got to come forward more. I already said it's a junior, so we got to warm it, bring it forward, and we'll put it alongside the tube like mine. This is into the firewall on the car. So, I mean, the success is if you think about it, that was Junior's first carburetor of all, and it worked. It kicked right off. Um, you never saw me grab the distributor, right? It fired off on a click. Junior was operating the button. So I was going to make a video on how to install a distributor and set it up. We did this once a long time ago and set it up to the amount of degrees you want it to fire off at or your initial timing. And in this one he used an ohm meter. And in this one I just set it to 10 degrees before I dumped that center. I figured that was a safe kickoff. And that's what I did and you guys heard it kick right off. You saw Junior fill the bowls with a syringe. Um, I'm going to pull a plug just to take a peek. And, um, nothing looks that abnormal. That, sh that shine on my fingers from down there. Uh, no leaks. Believe it or not, this radiator held fluid. Look at this. A 
I'm not sure what that stands for, but that's one of 84. Okay, I got the car. This is the original radiator to the wagon. Mounted on this thing. Okay. I got the car in 95. And in 95, my friend already had it sitting for 10 years in his barn. And I know before that it laid in a neighbor's barn for 10 years and then before that it was on the road. So somewhere right in that span when my friend got the car, something was done with the radiator. So but it, I just find it amazing that it doesn't leak. So, oh and another thing, I picked up this hose and that hose and now, we, now I know the correct part number. It's being pulled down a little. But this is the correct part number to replace that hose. Okay, I picked up both these hoses on Amazon. They were both Gates hoses um, for like $17 to the door. So I saved the part numbers. I'm going to reorder a new one for the wagon over there. And uh, that's it. I mean, everything else was uneventful. So I just wanted to make sure there was nothing wrong with the header. Oh, and here, you guys didn't see this. Like I told you, that baby was cooking. All of a sudden, the smoke from the headers was gone, and I smelled wood burning. And I was like, well, there's only one place is wood. That's where the muffler was resting. And I had to continually, yeah, as you can see, it's all warped up. I had to continually run water under here to keep this from, uh, I guess, finally igniting. That would have, that would ignit, ignit, that would have lit eventually. It would have smoldered for a long time. So, the train isn't leaking, which is good. You guys didn't see it when the tail shaft was spinning. Spent half of its brake in, in uh, neutral to make sure everything was full and that thing was wound around. The junior had to keep tapping it with a piece of wood because it wanted to walk out. Um, the engine didn't leak. It didn't leak coolant, didn't leak oil. Uh, surprisingly, the valve covers didn't leak. The intake didn't leak. None of the hoses seemed to be leaking. That's just the water from you rinsing everything down. Yeah, everything, everything needs cleaning now. But, uh, yeah, I grabbed the shift lever. We just looped this. I had to get two nipples to do that. This is really no heat. I should not really put the load on the tranny. Uh, that's it. And Junior said to me last night when we went to cruise night, we hooked up a load I three quarter and a bunch of the guys. He goes, I'm ready. I said, okay. He said to me, do we have to do the MSD distributor before I put it in? I go, no. He goes, well, I'm ready to pull the motor out tomorrow morning. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I just went online to get myself an MSD coil, get him an MSD coil. And I'm looking at starters. Starters vary a lot in price. So I'd like to get the one I have in the wagon because it's been good for 11 years. They still make it. I think it's a power mist, I think. I gotta look at it. Um, and that's it. It's amazing. These didn't leak. At least that you could hear. The wire that you saw on both of these was not to hold the exhaust up. The wire was to keep everything from rattling and falling apart. That's all that was there for. So, so if everything went to the rattle and come apart, the wire was holding. So... Here are the pipes. They look ancient. They were brand new yesterday. So, uh, so that's it, guys. I'm gonna leave that for him so he can see it. And uh, we're good. I'll put those things away. Okay, guys gasket swapped out. I put another one in that I had. Um, it's amazing both those spark ones are white. See? Because those leak can cause a problem, especially when you have a high lift, not high lift, but long duration can. It'll draw the air back in and lean it. That's why you always see these guys fire up their cars and they look around for an exhaust leak before they go down the track. So, uh, with that said, we're going to kick this thing off, but not now. Maybe not even today. 
I went around, I retightened the valve cover bolts, I made sure it didn't take bolts with the height. Uh, I went through a bunch of stuff. Uh, I gotta come up with something for a dipstick tube. I gotta look into it before I alter this one. I need this tube over here, period. My, my firewall is like right here. So I don't know what that dipstick tube is for. When I got the tranny, the tranny had the original color to it, you know, and he was never painted. But yet he sanded and painted this. So I'm wondering if this came from somewhere else. Or I would have to look up at the AMX. I know this tranny came from a 73, I think it is. 73 or 74 Javelin AMX. So I gotta see how close my engine is to the final wall. Because it might just fit that. But with that said, we're gonna put a bend in it here. Maybe a bend there, I don't know. Just lean it forward. And when we lean it forward, we'll turn it and bring it out here like my car. But I want to put a better tab than I did on my car. Um, my car is basically hooked from here to that loop. We need better than that. So, uh, so I got to work on that. And I got to work on the auto valve linkage before it goes in the car. I can't do that in the car. That's got to be done here now. So, if, uh, I mean, it should be. If this linkage is the same, which it should be, and everything should be the same, I'll do it all to this car for the, even the one going on here is the 750 double pump. This should be in the same correlation to the two or the four bolts, without a doubt, and it looks like the same arm. So I remember when I changed these arms, there was really only that choice. So, I'm going to hook the right here. Yeah, we'll do it during the week.